Happy New Year. I am so excited to be with you here this afternoon and safely here. I'll tell you, I was just on the road with my daughter and we were coming back um, from an emergency session. Thankfully, so far her dog is doing better actually, but I had to travel with my daughter on the icy roads and I'm so grateful that we're back safely. And I just wanna say Happy New Year. And there is a lot of chit chat, talk, posts, all on social media about vision boards. And um, if you know anything about me, you know that I love all things vision boards. And so I thought that I would come on here and point out a few things that um, I've noticed that are some common mistakes. Now, are there any mistakes that will inhibit you? from manifesting your goals. No, there's not any real wrong way to create a vision board. But what I do know is that there are some mistakes that people are making that will certainly create barriers for you to manifest more quickly. So the first one that I noticed is that many people want to feel more energy, want to feel healthier, have a weight release, a weight loss goal. And so what they do is they put on their vision board this goal. And that's one of the things I'm going to talk about in point number two about goals versus versus vision. But when you put, say, a thin person, even a picture of yourself, say, you know, when you were weighing less weight, it's a form of comparison. And every time I ask one of my clients, how does that make you feel? They say, not really good. So that's your first indicator that that doesn't belong in your vision board. If the image that you have on your board does not make you feel good, it doesn't belong in your vision board. So keep that in mind that a, an image that invokes comparison or that it's, you know, a motivation, but it, it, it's sort of a subtle discipline. Um, it feels like you're punishing yourself by looking at this person who's a much thinner person and to say, well, I'm being inspired by them. Are you really? So I'd love to check, chat with you further about what to put on your board. So what is your vision for your most healthy self versus feeling like you need to discipline yourself and have this thin person? So that's number one, comparison. Mistake number two that I see is that people, they believe they're making a vision board, but actually what they're making is a goal board. And I understand the attraction and why people want to put down goals. For one, it feels like attainable. And that's actually the number one fear that I hear when people talk to me about not creating a vision board or you know, the, the trepidation of creating a vision board is that what if I put something on there and it doesn't manifest? Then what? So this is the brave piece. This is the part about believing and also the miracle of the manifestation is to put down what is the vision, not the goal. Because what our ego wants to do is it wants to right away make that connection. Like, okay, so if I do this step, this step, this step, then it's going to check, it's going to manifest. So your brain wants to have that path, that travel that you can check that off. A vision is something that you cannot see the how. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in relation to uh, putting a check or like a monetary uh, amount on your board as well. So number two, goal board versus vision board. Number three mistake that I see is that people are attracted to words. And this is something I caution my clients every time I put together a vision board workshop is that when you look at images, when you look at magazines, you're going to want to pull out words and that's fine. However, it's a vision board, meaning that the primary focus gets to be images. Images promote feeling, which promotes energy, and it's the energy that promotes the law of attraction. So words feel more one or two dimensional. So many times I'll see people's boards that if they've done them elsewhere on their own, they're really full of words. And I'm going to talk about clutter as well as another mistake, but um, number three is words versus images. So the first two, the, the first mistake was comparison. Number two, or discipline, feeling like you need to discipline yourself in order to 
like punish yourself in order to motivate yourself into this vision. Weird, isn't it? Number two was goals versus, versus vision. Number three is words versus images. So having more words on your board versus images. Number four, the fourth mistake that I see is that people put a check on their board. Now, is that a mistake? No. My mentor, Jack Canfield, who co-wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, he talks about having a check. He actually had it on his ceiling. He had a million dollars on his ceiling. Um, Jim Carrey, he carried a check around in his wallet as his motivation. But what I want you to know is that the check is a goal. So going back to goals versus vision. So the check is a goal because it's a how. And so the check is only a number unless you have the purpose behind the amount that you're writing on your check. So think about what is it that you want to have that money for? What other part of your vision board is that going to support? Is it, I was just speaking with an amazing client. He, um, oh, it was so exciting today. He declared that he will be building an orphanage for deserving children in Pakistan. Like, seriously, when he declared it, I got goosebumps. I'm like, I can see it. I know it. I feel it. Ah, oh, incredible. So what do you want that money for? Otherwise, it's just an amount and it doesn't have the energy behind it. Okay, so that's mistake number four. Mistake number five, and I've already alluded to this a little bit, is cluttered. So many vision boards that I see are like a collage. And, you know, when we're in high school and when we're in, you know, middle school, that was fun. It was fun to, you know, do paper cutting out of things and maybe your Christmas list and just slap it all over there. But this is a process to support your mindset. It's to support your focus. The number one thing that people, when they come and do a vision board with me, is they say, Deb, I'm looking for clarity. Well, why would you want to distract from the clarity and from the focus by having images overlapping each other and competing with one another? Leave some white space. So I always say it's like a margin in the book. So it gives your eye a place to rest. So five common mistakes, comparison, goals versus vision, words versus images, a check, um, having the purpose behind your check, and the last cluttered. So if you want to know more about how to create a vision board that works and that will manifest, like thousands of my clients have, and I've just been able to be privileged to work with people all over the globe in 2020, I am super excited to be able to talk to you. So direct message me, private message me, and we'll book a conversation. It's free. And we'll see what uh, will manifest for your best life. So happy new year. Cheers. Bye-bye.